Well, hello everyone. How are we all doing today, tonight, this afternoon, depending on where in the world you are watching today's live chat. Uh, hi, my name is Brian Barron. I'm the director of skincare research at Paula's Choice Skincare. You came to the right channel. Uh, it is June 28th. 28th, my gosh, two days past my brother's birthday. Ugh, he just turned 38. <clears throat> Which definitely makes me feel old because I remember distinctly um, my mother's pregnancy for him and when, when he was born and all that. He's my youngest sibling and my only brother. Uh, and he's a good guy. Um, and he's the only one of us that was brave enough with his wife to have four kids. <laughs> oh, the rest of us are onesies and twosies. No, wait, there's one that has three. Anyway, enough about my family. Today we are here to talk about... The latest launch from Paula's Choice, our Healthy Glow Invisible Sunscreen Oil, Broad Spectrum SPF 30. <clears throat> Very cool formula. Uh, it launched this month in honor of, uh, some of you know that um, Paula's Choice, uh, the month of June, is our anniversary month. So we are 28 years uh, and going strong. A 28 years old feels a bit dated <laughs> and we're definitely not a dated brand and I, it's a pet peeve of mine but when someone says they're x number of years young i'm like really no you're not um but that's just me being cynical so um i wanted to mention a couple of things before we go into the uh specifics on the new product uh which has been getting a lot of love on social and we've been getting some incredible uh, customer reviews for this product so um thank you so much for that it's always gratifying to me and to our entire R&D and, and product development team when something new that we bring to market that we're all excited about actually makes you excited too and exceeds uh, your expectations. That's always what we're trying to do. Um, we also have our <clears throat> baseball hat um, that launched this month. Um, I think this is limited edition too. Maybe if someone from Paul's Choice is watching, they can confirm that. But it is it has embroidery on the side that says Team SPF, Paula's Choice, brand logo on the back. It is a completely adjustable hat, which is great. I pretty much have to put this on the largest setting because I have a large head. Um, and uh, the other thing I really like about this hat, just separate from the fact that it is comfortable, it's vented, of course, so you're not going to trap heat by wearing it. Um, but it is made from 100% recycled cotton. So um, that's about all you need to know other than uh, it is not machine washable. It is spot clean only um, depending on how dirty you get it. Um, it's probably because of the metal on here towards the back that it is not. Um... The other thing you can do that I think is actually kind of cool, if you can see that. If you have a smaller head <clears throat> and you need to kind of like pull this further over, you can tuck the little strappy thing into the side here and kind of just work that in so it doesn't hang out like that and look all floppy. So love the new hat, really appreciate that. And I am not a huge hat person, um, but I actually like wearing that one because it is super comfortable and it's lightweight. So Healthy Glow Invisible Sunscreen Oil. It is a dropper applicator, glass bottle that has a really cool, um, I guess I would describe it as a holographic finish. And you press the dispenser to bring some up into the dip tube. And I'm just gonna drop a few, you can kind of like do this one at a time or you can kind of press this more forcefully to get more to stream out at once. But it just, it is a waterless formula. It just has a super, excuse me, super smooth, texture it like instantly makes your skin feel hydrated supple and it just blends beautifully there's no um because it is a non-mineral spf the two actives are avabenzone and octanoxate those are both stabilized by the way with an ingredient called butyloctyl salicylate so that you do not need to worry about the avabenzone or octanoxate becoming unstable uh, while this is on your skin protecting it and just that finish 
It's just one of the things that really <clears throat> got us uh, geeked about this formula was just, it's like this sunscreen that you look forward to using. It doesn't even seem like a sunscreen. It just feels like this really elegant, lightweight facial oil that you're, you're going to want to put on. And uh, it was, it's definitely an all-new concept in sunscreen for us. Um, I mentioned that it's not aqueous or waterless. Um, along with providing that UV protection, it is also clinically proven to protect skin from visible changes associated or caused by blue light exposure, both environmental and uh, screens. With screens like your tablets, your phones, your laptop, <clears throat> almost any modern day device in that regard has a setting that lets you disable blue light or at least dial it way down in favor of harmless yellow light and that change can be a little jarring at first if you're you know used to because blue light is definitely brighter you know it's just punchier and when you change to the yellow light setting on your devices it can look a little Almost like if you know what sepia tone is or just ugh, dingy almost, but then you get used to it and you realize that what this is doing to help your skin and what this is doing to help your eyes is worth it. So, I mean, I did that on all my devices and I haven't looked back, but we cannot turn off or change the blue light that is emanated from or within the environment as part of the light spectrum of which ultraviolet is one portion uh, that reaches our skin every day. So I love that this also kicks in the blue light, uh, blue light protection. And we also included a barrier support complex built around sunflower oil. Um, can kind of take you through a bit of a geeky deeper dive into the formula. Um, the main ingredient is uh, an emollient solvent known as octyldodecanol. And not only is that helping to produce that instant sensation of softness and that nice supple finish, because of its solvent properties, it is also helping to um, solubilize and suspend uh, the UV filters in the formula. So that's why with a formula like this, you don't have to shake it before use. There's no need to do that. Um, I also like that octododecanol uh, is able to moisturize without a greasy feel. But uh, to cut any potential for that, this feeling too greasy or slick, we added an ingredient that is another solvent, solvent, but a different type of solvent called isohexadecane. And that is much lighter weight on its own. If you were to <clears throat> put 100% of this ingredient, uh, like from a supplier, just get like a little bit and rub it on your skin, uh, it's very silky. Uh, it seems to almost like disappear into the skin and, uh, and leave a very soft, uh, like a velvet-like powder finish. So it works really well with the octododecanol to kind of balance things out and make this sunscreen oil one that is suitable for all skin types. There is also <clears throat> uh, an emollient known as C1215 alkyl benzoate. And you'll see that ingredient in many different types of sunscreens uh, that are in lotion, um, cream, uh, and increasingly this oil type form because it's such a superior solubilizer for UV filters like the ones that we used in this formula that need to be added to the oil phase. So whenever a <clears throat> formula is coming together, um, depending on the type of emulsion it is, either like water and oil, oil and water, or water and oil and water, which is called a wow emulsion, you need different solubilizers that go into either the water phase or the oil phase that are going to help those oil or water soluble ingredients do their thing in the formula without uh, conflicting or sparring, if you will, with the unlike ingredients. <clears throat> and the easiest visual for this is uh, vinegar and oil salad dressing. You've seen them <clears throat> or done this at home where you mix those two substances and what happens, the oil, typically olive oil, falls to the bottom of the carafe or the container and then the vinegar, because it's water soluble, um, floats to the top. And in order to get the, the flavors to meld before you put them on your greens, you need to shake it up to blend the two. Well, 
ingredients like C1215 alkyl benzoate and other types of solvent and emulsifiers basically do that work for you and make the formulator's job a lot easier. I mentioned uh, butyl octosilicylate. Uh, it is, it's, it's a salicylic acid derivative whose role is uh, stabilizing the avobenzone by catching the released energy that would ordinarily cause it to degrade prematurely. All UV filters, <clears throat> uh, even the mineral ones, do break down, become less effective with ongoing exposure to UV light. That is simply by virtue of how they work. Much like antioxidants, the more free radicals they intercept and neutralize, the weaker and weaker and weaker they get, which is why products with antioxidants and your sunscreen aren't just a one and done thing. You need to apply them daily. And in the case of sunscreens, uh, you may need to apply them several times a day, depending on um, your length of time <clears throat> being exposed to the sun and what you're doing outside. The other ingredient that I think would be uh, or is worth calling out in terms of the backbone of the formula is one called ethyl cellulose, and that is a film forming polymer that helps to keep the sunscreen actives in place. In order for these UV filters to work uh, and, and, disp or, and to be dispersed evenly on skin, they need to form a, a flexible film. Uh, this also helps uh, not only provide even protection, but it also helps the product to better resist rubbing off. So, you know, you've got sunscreen on your arm, you're, maybe you brush against an object, you're brushing against your clothing, you might have a itch or something like that. All of those little things can chip away at the sunscreen's ability to protect the skin. So you want to see an ingredient like this that's gonna help form a film that keeps the UV filters in place as long as possible. It is not an impervious film. It is not a, uh, a set it and forget it type thing. Uh, hence the need to continue to reapply sunscreen when you're outdoors um, for more than two hours at a time. The antioxidant blend uh, that helps it not only helps protect skin from the free, uh, free radicals that are generated by the environment uh, and blue light, those include uh, ethyl ferulate, and that is a rice-derived derivative, a rice, rice derivative of the antioxidant ferulic acid. We're also using a compound from rosemary leaf that's rich in a super antioxidant known as carnosic acid. And as I mentioned at, at the top of the show for the description, the sunflower seed oil uh, definitely has some antioxidant compounds in there, but it is primarily a source of essential fatty acids that skin's barrier needs to remain healthy and replenished. And all of that is topped off with classic vitamin E, tocopherol, that is, uh, it's a very common ingredient. You see vitamin E in many, many products, but I always like including it in sunscreen because it does such a good job of neutralizing those free radicals that tend to have a negative effect on skin's sebum. <clears throat> um, there's, there was research that came out several years ago, maybe like six, six or seven years ago, that said <clears throat> the more sebum you have in your skin, uh, and then the more time you, if you, the, the oilier your skin is and the more unprotected exposure to UV light you get, the more damage you're actually sustaining because the UV light has a very potent oxidizing effect on the sebum. So it essentially makes your sebum start working against the health and appearance of your skin. Using oil soluble antioxidants such as vitamin E, um, it can help offset that damage. And then of course, the UV filters that you'll find in uh, synthetic or mineral-based sunscreens are going to help in that regard as well. Um, the other thing, this is uh, price-wise, I didn't mention that, it's $29 US retail for a one ounce fill. And then uh, there was some questions on how much of this you're supposed to apply. We don't get other than saying apply liberally and evenly, we don't get super prescriptive about that in terms of like, you know, um, fill up the fill up the the clear dip tube all the way to the top and then dispense that entire amount and apply to your face and neck. That can backfire because if you have a larger face like mine, 
uh, big head, big face, <laughs> you're going to need more sunscreen than somebody who is more petite than me that has a smaller head, smaller face, less surface area to cover, quite literally. So if both of us use the same amount of sunscreen, the person with the smaller or normal sized face would likely be sufficiently covered and I would be left um, with inadequate protection in order to get the stated SPF on the label. So my best advice is just to dispense some of this. You can put it in the palm of your hand and then use the fingers of your uh, other hand to just smooth an even layer. You want to be able to see it. You can kind of see that reflection over your face and neck. You can use this around the eyes. Because it is a, an oil, I would maybe take it up to the orbital bone and then let your body heat move it a little bit forward uh, without risking getting it in the eye itself. So. Uh, there was also a question, maybe on the list already, but can you apply this sunscreen over another sunscreen? And um, the short answer is yes. The recommendation is uh, if your sunscreen is a conventional lotion or cream or like an opaque fluidy type sunscreen, put that on first. If it's a water-based formula, which most of those that fall under that texture description are going to be water-based. So you put that on first and then follow with the oil. The general advice <clears throat> that I've seen in the literature is that unless it's, it's best to not layer the synthetic sunscreen actives like avobenzone and octanoxate with the nature derived mineral sunscreens of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. There could be some incompatibilities there. It's when those, when the mineral and the synthetic actives are blended in one formula, you know that, that if that formula has an SPF rating, you know it's been tested to uh, meet or exceed the SPF rating on the label. Um, so the thinking is that by pairing like with like when you're layering two different sunscreens, that it's just better to stick with the same family of UV filters as opposed to mixing and matching. So that's my general advice. If you are a fan of normally use a mineral sunscreen, I wouldn't recommend putting this on top uh, just because it, I, don't, I don't know that the, the protection you would get from those two would be um, superior to using just one of them by itself. Um, I'm gonna grab a few questions here and then I did, I grabbed an assortment because I realized as interesting as this product is, I don't need a whole hour to tell you about it. So now that we've gotten that part taken care of, I was going to share with you some of the other personal favorite sunscreens uh, that I have uh, discovered. Those, some of them I've, I've liked for quite some time. Uh, even though I may not personally use all of these, I think that they're excellent formulas uh, that, that could satisfy a broad range of needs. And then uh, there's a couple of newer ones uh, including one that I experimented with on a recent uh, vacation that my family took to uh, the western coast of Florida. And as you can see, I came back looking super tan. Um, <laughs> of course I didn't. Um, but the reason for that is uh, I did a lot of sunscreen layering and I, um, I think that that really helped. Um, one of the ways that I know for sure it helped is that it, when I was <clears throat> in Florida, a couple of years prior. Um, it was more spring than summer uh, in terms of time of year, but I uh, was only putting on one sunscreen uh, on my face and I had um, my melasma areas through here, both sides got darker. Despite putting on a lot more sunscreen than I normally do, despite wearing a hat, uh, despite doing my best to stay out of the sun between the peak hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. where the UVB radiation is the strongest, I still got some color there that I didn't want uh, that I then had to spend the next several months treating uh, with our products to get those to fade back up again. And they eventually did. So I thought, you know, I'm going to, they're going to be in the Florida sun again. It's just so much more intense than it is here up north. But I definitely want to go outside. I, I, we had access to the beach right on the Gulf. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking my vacation from inside of a house. So I doubled up 
on my sunscreens and I'll show, I'll show you which ones I used. Uh, and lo and behold, that did not happen again. So quick segue to, oh, it is limited edition. Thanks, Paula's Choice. Uh, that would be for the hat. Uh, Jastity says, sorry, Brian, didn't think that, wait, is there a baseball caps exposed the neck? Yes, they do. Facial shade is part of sun protection, and for that, we need a hat with a brim all around. Anyone who cares for this gun has a stack of them here. Yeah, I, when I'm going to be out in intense sun, you're absolutely right. A baseball hat is going to leave the back of the neck exposed. Um, however, if you are a person with longer hair, and particularly if it's of normal, uh, normal texture to being on the thicker side or the curly side, um, that hair, if it falls past the back of your neck, it's going to provide some natural protection. Nobody with thick, long hair is getting a sunburn on the back of their neck unless they're like parting their hair and doing this. Um, but, so if you are, if your hair is of that uh, style and length and thickness, a baseball hat is going to be fine for you. Uh, if your neck is exposed, um, you can either wear two hats <laughs> with the bill facing forward and one facing backward, or there's, yeah, there's a lot of different sun hats out there. Um, I have two or three of them. Uh, the one I wear when I go boating is redonkulously big. It's, it's just, it's probably a four inch brim and it goes all the way around and then I'll literally adjust it depending on where the sun is, is hitting me. Um, I wish a hat like that was more conducive to swimming. Um, but it just, it isn't. Um, so I do have some fabric-y type hats, uh, or like a polyester type material that I can wear in the water that doesn't have a, as wide of a brim. But yes, if you're going to be out in intense sun, uh, you, of course, also put sunscreen on the back of your neck if it's, if it's exposed. Um, again, you don't have that nice thick hair there to block the sun. Oh, just see. Yep. And then uh, this person went on to say, coming from a serious SPF needing place like Australia, a baseball cap is no protection at all. Um, I disagree with that. It's, I wouldn't say it's no protection at all, um, but it is not as much protection as you would get with a larger hat that has a 360 degree brim. So, all right. Moving on to, I'm going to have to reach up for some of these. Ooh, there's another one. I'm limited on my desk space today. So you're gonna to have to bear with me and pull this thing out. Okay. I'm gonna talk about three Paula's Choice sunscreens first because that's my brand. Um, the first one is the Re Resist Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid, which has an SPF 50. This is one of our best sellers. You can see it is, it is super fluid. But that literally makes it feel almost water light on skin. This is another non-mineral. This is a favorite of our clients who have uh, visible signs of aging, uh, not only want the sun protection to uh, not get tan and to prevent sunburn, but also they want those extra ingredients that are gonna help ward off signs of aging. So some great antioxidants in here, uh, including a dill extract. We're using that in an amount that matches clinical studies showing it helps to support skin's elastin and protect those elastic fibers from fragmenting uh, as they can with UV exposure. The other one from Resist that I like is the Skin Restoring Moisturizer SPF 50. So these two facial SPFs have our highest SPF rating for those uh, of you out there. I know a lot of you want SPF 50, not SPF 30. This one is more of a cream texture. It's a bit uh, light yellow in color, um, partially because of the coffee seed extract it contains. But this, it looks thick, um, but it feels amazing. It does not feel thick or occlusive on the skin. It has a nice cushiony, creamy texture. Both of these, this one being more for normal to dry skin, definitely more for normal to oily skin, but anyone can wear this. If you're somebody with dry skin and you want a lighter sunscreen, I would encourage you to try this. Um, it feels super light. This skin restoring moisturizer in the dark blue tube definitely has more of a, and I don't like this word, so please forgive me, moist finish. It's definitely more of a hydrating formula, hence its designation for dry skin. 
Next up, and this is the last one from Paula's Choice. Uh, again, these are ones that I personally like and have recommended more than once to other people. Um, all of our SPFs though, just to reassure you, uh, have been tested to provide broad spectrum protection and all of them are fragrance free, as is every Paula's Choice item, and all of them are also um, chock full of antioxidants. The Resist formulas um, have a slightly broader assortment of um, uh, anti-aging ingredients than some of those in our other lines, uh, but they're all working toward the goal of helping to protect skin uh, from different types of environmental damage and help skin look younger. Speaking of environmental damage, in addition to UV light, um, the Defense Essential Glow Moisturizer SPF 30, which is my husband's personal favorite. He tells me if we ever discontinue this, we're getting a divorce. Um, he's joking, I hope. <laughs> but this contains uh, a broad mix of antioxidants like cherry and kiwi uh, and arugula that have been uh, shown in numerous studies to help protect skin from the negative effects of, uh, negative visible effects, I should say, of exposure to airborne pollutants. Pollution is definitely a big threat to the health and appearance of your skin. This one is pure mineral. It is titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Just double checking that, yes. With zinc oxide being in the lead, titanium dioxide being at about 5%. So because of those minerals, it looks slightly grayish, but it smooths on really nicely. It doesn't have a really strong, um, what's called a soaping effect that some mineral sunscreens can have. Um, and then it just leaves this really pretty non-ashy glow because some mineral sunscreens, you know, depending on the depth of your skin, they can look kind of ashen. Um, this does not have, this does have um, some mica in it, which is a, a mineral pigment that's used for, for the glowiness. Um, depending on, depending on your skin type, it, like I don't use this one on my face because I'm combination skin with a fairly oily T-zone. Like I have to use Shine Stopper, which is our mattifier, um, before all of these live chats, or I would probably blind you guys with the, the shine from my forehead. Um, so this is a little bit too much shine for me. But if you have slightly oily skin anywhere to the in, into the category of normal to dry skin, I think you're really gonna like this, particularly if you want a pure mineral sunscreen. No issues with using this around the eyes. Um, it does not have any iron oxides in it, which create uh, a flesh tone tint. Um, it's very, very difficult. I know I've discussed this before to get like a universal tint in a mineral sunscreen. There's almost always uh, people in the uh, very, very light end of the skin tone spectrum and the very dark end of the skin, skin tone spectrum that are underserved by that sole option. But it can depend on how sheer it is. And so the next couple I'm going to talk about are tinted mineral options um, that I have had a lot of success with. So I, I personally use this one from MD Solar Sciences. It is their Mineral Tinted Cream SPF 30. This is a whopping 17% zinc oxide and 2% titanium dioxide with iron oxides for a tint. It is a non-aqueous formula. Uh, you can definitely see that it's tinted. It goes on pretty sheer. Like I just put it on that half of the top of my hand. You can see a bit of a color difference between where it is and where it isn't. But on my light skin tone, this is one of the things I have to be careful with with a tinted mineral sunscreen. They tend... The wrong ones for me tend to look orange or almost like um, too yellow, either too orange or too yellow, because I have more of a I have more of a neutral undertone that swings slightly pink um, in makeup speak. So I have found that this one uh, is super tenacious again because it's it's heavily silicone based. If you're anti silicone, this is not for you. Um, but it stays on really well. This is the one I put on my face when I'm going to be out on the water, uh, either like paddle boarding or swimming. It is, uh, it is water resistant, just double checking that because 
<laughs> the way it stays on my skin, it certainly seems to be. But I wanted to make sure it was official, so it's water resistant for 80 minutes. The other tinted mineral one that I really, really like, and this is my daily facial moisturizer, is the SkinCeuticals Physical Fusion SPF 50, another titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Generally speaking, I like seeing those two minerals in one formula. It isn't necessary to get a broad spectrum claim or even to get optimum protection. But one of the things I like about seeing some titanium dioxide <clears throat> is that unlike zinc oxide, which really excels most in the UVA range, both UVA 1 and UVA 2, in terms of like where its peak protection is, titanium dioxide really picks up the slack in the UVB range. Um, and if you look at the, the, the graph of it compared to zinc oxide, you'll see it's just much higher in UVB. Zinc oxide works in the UVB range. Don't toss out your pure zinc oxide sunscreens. But I think for just, it just is a better sense of uh, assurance to me, particularly because I... I'm almost more worried about UVB than UVA, which are the sun's aging rays. They penetrate further into the skin. They pretty much eat collagen for breakfast. Um, I'm more worried about UVB because of the fact that I'm so fair and I'm a burns than tans type of skin. Um, I don't want to get the burn to get to the tan because I know a tan, both of them are a sign of UV damage. Uh, and I also uh, try to keep um, too many freckles from popping out. I have definitely had a love-hate relationship with freckles over the years. As a kid, I hated them. Uh, as a teenager, I wasn't too jazzed about them. Uh, but part of that was because I grew up in an era where what, during my teen years in the mid to late 80s, everybody was tanning. You know, that was just, you'd go on spring break, you'd come back with a deep, dark tan. It was just expected. Um, we didn't really understand how damaging that was. Um, and it, even if we did, we didn't care. It's like teenagers who smoke which at one point I was one of those too. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know it's bad for you, but you're like, eh, it won't happen to me. So um, I, this is my, this is my daily. I buy, it definitely is a shake before using. Um, I buy the bigger size. This size, the 4.2 ounce is $72. And then the smaller 1.7 ounce size is 42 now. I think when I first started buying this, that smaller size was like 36. So. Just price increases over the years. It happens. The MD Solar Science is one. I did not tell you the price on this for a 1.7. That is um, 33. You can get this from the brand site or it's sold on Amazon. I mentioned the price. I think of the two resist. Those are 37. This one is 33. Um, this one, like the uh, Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid, is also very thin. I mean, there's like no thickeners in this. <laughs> And I'll show you the tint, and then you can kind of see like how fast it starts running. So they call this, do they still call it a universal tint? They just say a tinted fluid. I think they, this is SkinCeuticals being a L'Oreal brand. I think they kind of toned that down because people were just like, it's not universal. Um, again, no tint is. There's always going to be people that are left out, um, which is why... It can be frustrating. This one tends to work really well for my natural skin color. I mean, I have it on now, uh, and I put it on my face and neck, and it's just, uh, it can sting a little when I put it on. If like if, if the night before I was using a lot of active ingredients, um, <clears throat> but that's kind of par for the course with my skin. So I still use that. Um, <clears throat> why don't I use? The tinted mineral sunscreen that Paula's Choice has, the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. I have used that in the past, <coughs> but it takes a lot more um, maneuvering, so to speak, for me to get it to look right on my skin color. It's just, it's tinted. It's just a touch too dark for me. And so this one is just more neutral uh, and more sheer. So I've stuck with that. <clears throat> Got these two to tell you guys about. That's exciting. This has become one of my favorite new body slash beach sunscreens. It's the Banana Boat Light as Air SPF 50 Weightless Protection. Uh, they came out with this earlier in the year. Um, there are several variations of this for face and body. 
I have found that the larger body size feels pretty dang close to the one that they sell for the face. This you get more for your money. It's a it's a six ounce tube. It retails for around $13 or $14, depending on where you're shopping. You may even be able to find it on sale for less. The light is air. It's accurate. You put this on and uh, give it about five minutes and it feels like almost nothing. Like you can tell you've got something on, but unlike a lot of those body sunscreens you'll find at the drugstore, it doesn't feel icky. You don't feel coated. That's one of the things I hate about <clears throat> putting a lot of sunscreen on uh, from the neck down. It's one of the reasons that um, whenever I'm like at the beach or a pool, I almost always have a UV shirt on that I can get wet because I save myself from having to apply sunscreen to my entire torso, which is a lot of effort. You gotta find somebody to help you get all the spots on your back. Um, in fact, in Florida, when we were putting sunscreen on our son, uh, who's a darker complexion than, than both of us um, because he's in part uh, African uh, American, um, <clears throat> I missed a section like right here on his neck and I was using this one well the next day he literally had a red i felt so guilty he had a red stripe and i'm looking at that and i said dashel did you were you scratching yourself what happened and he said no it just feels really hot and i was like oh sheesh he got a sunburn and we missed that spot all of the surrounding area was perfectly fine no color change you know so even he's probably a fitzpatrick three to four, you know, out of the one to six scale. Um, he definitely tans very easily in the sun. Uh, we try to minimize that as much as possible. I'm not saying it doesn't look good, but I know it's not actually good for his skin. Um, so it just goes to show, take this as a cautionary tale. Make sure you apply evenly. So this Banana Boat one, again, white, it's an opaque white cream. It's kind of thick. You know, it's not moving around too much, but then you just you blend it on. I am going to be so protected. I should go for a walk in the sun after this, except the air quality here in Michigan is terrible today because of the <clears throat> wildfires up in Canada. They're blowing their smoke down here. I certainly hope they get those under control as soon as possible for all of us concerned here and up north. But the only drawback to this one is it is fragranced. Everything else I've shown you does not have any fragrance in it and that is always best for skin. Um, I, the trade-off for me is worth it. Let's just put it that way. I know the fragrance isn't doing my skin any favors. Uh, it does dissipate after a while, which is great, but this just, for the money, this just feels amazing. You have to try this if you hate the feel of sunscreens. It is water resistant for 80 minutes. Oh, the other thing I like about the Light is Air from Banana Boat is if you have kids to put sunscreen on, this is easy because it doesn't have that constant um, greasy slip where you're just massaging and massaging and massaging and hoping for the best. It's like it's easier to see where you've put this, you know, because you'll you'll feel it. You'll but you'll feel it, it, but it's a drier feeling is what I'm getting at rather than like that greasy feel. So <clears throat> my um, colleague Maureen who is relatively new to Paula's Choice, and she's been an amazing addition. She is our innovation manager. She told me um, about uh, some of the sunscreens <clears throat> she likes <clears throat> that are from Korea. And one of them is from uh, the brand Etude House, and it's called Sunprise Mild, yes, Mild Airy Finish. Uh, it's a milk, it's SPF 50, it's PA++++, which is a, uh, rating system that indicates a very high level of UVA protection. Um, it is not required for sunscreens. Um, some brands, particularly those sold in the Asian and European markets, um, just do this testing as a matter of course because <clears throat> it has more or less become a consumer expectation in those areas of the world. Uh, it's that, to many consumers, it's that extra assurance beyond what broad spectrum states. Um, so. This is the one that I used in Florida on my recent trip, either layered under this one or layered under this one. 
So <clears throat> again, keeping it all mineral. This is, uh, I just wanted to make sure I get it correctly from my notes. This is uh, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, and both of them are nano. So the really impressive thing about this, and again, it's this is another just super fluid one. A lot of the really fluid sunscreens <clears throat> coming out of Korea, part of K-Beauty, are uh, they're so thin and they're so fluid because they contain a high amount of denatured alcohol. That's not great for skin. Even low amounts of denatured alcohol can be problematic. Um, in a product like this, it's not as bad as it would be like using an alcohol-based toner, but still not great to see. And I know that there's ways, <clears throat> as this product is a testament to, that you can get that fluid milky feel without using a solvent as drying and irritating as denatured alcohol. So this just <clears throat> blends into skin so beautifully. There is no tint and it leaves a bare, this has it on there, this side does not. Barely, barely discernible white cast. Like I, I would wear this outside you know, with no, with nothing tinted on top and not feel like I was um, looking too pale or ghastly, you know, just that white cast on somebody with my skin color can just be too much. But this, uh, this is also, and this is $12. This is literally $12 on Amazon in the States. Um, you do need to shake it. Got that little ball in there, but nice mix of antioxidants, uh, naturally derived. Again, um, they achieve this gorgeous texture and application in large part due to various siloxane and silicone ingredients. So if you are anti those, um, logist or, or um, from what the research says <clears throat> and from the numerous suppliers we've spoken to, there's no reason, it's, it's personal preference there's no skin risk or skin safety or irritation or breakout concern to avoid siloxanes or silicone ingredients. However, if from personal experience, you know that they are particularly problematic for your skin, you've traced it back to that, great. There's lots of SPFs on the market that don't contain those ingredients. I just wanted to be clear um, that well, on which ones do because I know some of you watch out for that. Also containing some siloxanes and silicones in various permutations uh, is this Shiseido has a brand um, in Japan uh, that is uh, marketed to people with sensitive skin. It's called Anessa. And I was in Seattle recently. In fact, like got back from Florida, was home for like 36 hours back on a plane to Seattle uh, and met with the ideation team for a couple of days. And our CEO, Erica, had recently come back, she was at the meeting and she had recently come back from a trip to Spain. And that is where she found this SPF 50 PA++++++, well, four, four pluses, sunscreen. I was telling her about this one. She was telling me about this one. So I, um, what a shock, Amazon sells this too. It is 27.50, so it's double the cost of the, um, the sun prize from Etude House. It is the Anessa Perfect UV Sunscreen Mild Milk for Sensitive Skin. Uh, this one is also super fluid. Looks kind of look looks white, definitely milky, but again, blends into the skin beautifully. This one um, has less practically no discernible white cast with this whatsoever. There's no tint. Uh, it is fragrance free. It's actually a really nice formula for sensitive skin. There's no ingredients of concern uh, here, separate from what some people may be individually sensitive to, you know, in terms of uh, a master list of known sensitizing ingredients, they're not on board here. So thank you Shiseido uh, for creating products for sensitive skin that actually are good for sensitive skin. Um, too many brands that make that claim aren't following the formulary, uh, that type of formulary approach. So not only does this contain nano titanium dioxide and nano zinc oxide, and by the way, just to be clear, no research has shown that using nanoparticles of these ingredients uh, puts your skin or your body at risk. 
The nanoparticles are typically wrapped in bubbles, if you will, of much larger particles, those siloxane ingredients, for example, that physically cannot penetrate the skin. So you're keeping this very small nanoparticle that uh, on its own, without any sort of entrapment system, would penetrate uh, into the skin and potentially get into the body, but when they're in this nice entrapment system, they form a film on skin surface, it's very smooth, it's very even, and they do their job of protecting your skin from the UV rays. Shiseido talks about this um, <clears throat> smooth, smooth tech, the smooth something technology for the Inessa, and it's, it's basically a way that they've come up with because this is a reformulation. They, uh, as, as recently as 2020, they had another version of this product that apparently not only did that older version or original version contain um, some alcohol, the bad kind, but people didn't like how it went on and people didn't like how it looked on the skin. So they, if I did not see that version, this is the latest version, and I think this looks fantastic on the skin. Compared to the Sunprise, which is cheaper, uh, this one from Etude House, this has literally no white cast. Maybe if you have a, a skin Fitzpatrick type 6, which is the darkest, you might see a little bit, but honestly nothing you couldn't remedy with like a tiny drop of a bronzing gel to just cut it out entirely. Um, this one is also better for oily skin. It has um, more of a, I have so much sunscreen on my hand now, you, you can't really see it, but I have tried this on my face, did a split test with this, and the Anessa version um, kept my skin looking matte and almost had a um, airbrush-like finish. Really, really pretty. Um, this one is certainly no slouch. If you're on a budget and you want a mineral sunscreen and you're curious about K-Beauty, give this one a go. Um, but I think ultimately, if we're up to me, <clears throat> I think the Anessa is... Um, the better option overall and there's one other not so obvious reason that is the case and that is because the Anessa version being made in Japan contains a UV filter known as Tinosorb S. It is a, um, a very long ingredient name. Uh, this what you'll actually see on the label. It's like bisphenol triazolone. It's 16 syllables after that. But the trade name is Tinosorb S, and Tinosorb S is a synthetic UV filter with a larger molecular size, so it's not known to penetrate past skin's uppermost layers. And it is a very good and nicely stable, I mean, not Again, all of these filters break down eventually. Some of them are more stable inherently than others, and Tinosorb S is one of them. So Tinosorb S um, provides protection in the UVA and UVB range, so it's a really nice complement to the titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. I could not find information from the brand on what the percentage of the UV filters is in here, but it's possible that they went with the tinosorb and the minerals because that meant that even though they were using the nanomaterials, which are much less likely to be visible on skin, as in no white cast, they likely, because of the tinosorb, got to use a lower amount of one or both of them than they would in order to reach SPF 50 just relying on the mineral active. So that, that's my theory. I could not find uh, info before this show went live about the exact percentage of each UV filter. But I did determine that they're fragrance-free and uh, denatured alcohol-free. So looks like a few more questions came in. That's my my current crop of, of favorite sunscreens when uh, somebody new to Paul's Choice said, which one should I try for my face? Unless they specifically tell me that um, they have combination to oily skin and they want a tinted sunscreen, in which case I'd recommend the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. But otherwise, these three, very colorful. These three are my go-tos. You've got your mineral with a beautiful glow and lots of antioxidants. You've got your super fluid sunscreen uh, that it, for many people will say this is unlike any sunscreen for the face they've ever felt. They just love it. Uh, and then you've got the Skin Restoring Moisturizer, which is more of a traditional lightweight cream texture. Really lovely aesthetics to this one. Um, to me, this one feels not for my skin type, um, but I have experimented with it because that's what I do. Um, 
this one to me just really comes across more as a moisturizer that oops just happens to have SPF and it's a very high SPF at that with SPF 50. This one is they're both avobenzone uh, on board for the UVA it's stabilized by octocrylene um, in this formula I believe let me just double check this is the one that I, yeah that's got the octocrylene okay and then the Skin Restoring Moisturizer, I believe, relies on a non-UV filter to stabilize. I'd have to double check my notes. Sorry, should have done that before the show started, just to be sure. All right, let's wrap up with a couple other questions here. Hello again from Dubai. This is DJ Bassey. It's really hot and humid here now. I was wondering if it's okay to keep my serums in the fridge, specifically the C15 and clinical niacinamide. Ideally... <sighs> Um, we do what's called, for all of our formulas, we do what's as part of stability testing. We do a, a freeze-thaw test, uh, and they, they have to pass that. They have to withstand a certain amount of, certain amount of time being exposed to cold temperatures. Um, vitamin C, the C15 in the fridge should be fine because there's documented evidence that cold exposure does not have a hindering effect on ascorbic acid, uh, which is great. The clinical niacinamide, I don't think there'd be any worry about the niacinamide. I can't vouch for some of the other ingredients in that formula with long-term exposure to cold. What you might want to do, if you have the means and, and they're available, is, is look into getting one of those smaller beauty fridges that you can keep uh, in your bedroom or if your bathroom counter has enough room. Um, I'm not a huge fan of beauty fridges, generally speaking, because most product formulations are designed to um, work best and remain the most stable when kept at room temperature. But what do you do in your situation in Dubai when your room temperature is well above average and you don't want your beauty products to go bad? A beauty fridge can have um, utility in that sense. And uh, what is nice about them is that you can set the cooler temperature higher or warmer than where your refrigerator should be in order to prevent food from spoiling prematurely. So I think the ideal temperature range uh, here in the States where um, we have the uh, Fahrenheit, am I right? Yeah, Fahrenheit, is 37 to 39 degrees. And uh, with the beauty fridges, you can knock that up a bit to say like 45, 49 degrees even. Whereas if you did that with your food refrigerator, you would definitely get spoilage faster because most perishable foods need to be kept colder than that. So give that a go. Monica says, hello everyone. Excited about the new sunscreen oil, amazing product, plus blue light filters. I will layer it with my beloved SPF 50 light blue. That must be this one. Uh, and SPF 30 10 mineral sunscreen, best combo ever. Oh, are you using the, oh, and okay. Let me know how that goes, Monica. I don't know that you need three sunscreens, but if you're getting some intense sun, it couldn't hurt. Sumox says, hello, Brian. Can you layer super light daily and essential glow? Yes, that would be fine. Uh, hey, Brian, this is from Danny. I have a non-SPF related product question. What's the difference between the azelaic acid booster and the clear treatment EU version? They, the, from a formulary perspective, they are identical. The... Um, positioning of the product differs in the EU because of the fact that um, benzoyl peroxide, the topical disinfectant ingredient for acne, uh, is not available over the counter in the EU. So the azelaic acid, uh, which has uh, to varying degrees some antibacterial activity and anti-acne benefits, uh, we can make those claims over in EU and we cannot make those claims here in the States because of differing regulations around the ingredient azelaic acid. So that's the long and the short of it. Um, and I think with that, looks like we're about ready to wrap up. And thank you guys so much for watching. Get the Healthy Glow Invisible Sunscreen Oil while you can. Um, and I... I um, I don't mean to sound like an infomercial huckster, you know, like, act now, supplies are low, but supplies are low. <laughs> um, this is actually selling a lot better than what we even we had anticipated. Uh, people are loving it. So I don't know at this point uh, if it's going to stay in the line. It might, 
But as of today, the time of this recording, it remains limited edition. Uh, so when supplies are gone, they're at least for the foreseeable future, we'll see what happens. They're gone. So thank you to those who have tried it and told us what you thought about it. And uh, I hope you found this live chat helpful. We'll do one more this month. Keep you beautifully informed. Thanks.